called a moment in Palo Duro. The temperature touched 105 degrees as I walked along the long winding road in Palo Duro Canyon Park and snapped pictures as the sun slowly faded over the western canyon walls. Every few steps, I sipped ice water from my one and a half liter Nalgene bottle in hopes of shaking free of the oppressive summer heat for just a few glorious moments at a time. Six and a half weeks before, I'd not even considered the idea that I'd be taking a midsummer hike through America's second largest desert canyon. And yet, here I was. Actually, I'd already been out earlier that day. I'd awoke just before 6 a.m. when it was still a reasonable 75 degrees so that I could tackle the Given Spicer and Lowry Trail, one of the main canyon runs. It met up with the Cottonwoods Flat Trail, which took me to the Lighthouse, a dual rock structure that climbs 600 feet into the sky. Most people who find their way to Palo Duro miss out on the experience of scrambling to its top and watching the sun awaken the canyon. It wasn't an easy run, just a bit more than 11 miles, including the two-mile detour through the Little Wolf Trail loop, but it was one that needed to be taken. To watch the life stretch itself awake as the sun slid across the hard canyon floor inspired in all I've not yet found the worlds to explain. There was no on switch for the critters inhabiting the desert. There was nothing there was, just no, uh, there was just not one moment, and, or there was just nothing one moment and something the next. By 9 a.m., when I'd finished, the temperature was already more than 90 degrees, and I wanted nothing more than a good cup of coffee, a nice shower, and a nap. But there is no sleep once the sun comes up in Palo Duro. Before mid-morning, the temperatures would reach 100 degrees, and all I had was a little REI Passage 2 hiking tent for shelter. I couldn't even consider sleeping until about an hour after the sun goes down and the worst of the heat seeped into the night sky. So I showered, got in my car, and took the lone road towards Canyon, Texas, a God-fearing town of 12,000 people just about 12 miles outside of Palo Duro. It was home to West Texas A&M University, a public university within the Texas A&M school system with a very clear and present relationship to its Christian God. As I slowly drove through the town, stopping to walk for brief stretches in the sweltering heat, I continually bumped into small, tightly knit packs of the West Texas A&M Navigators, an evangelical student arm of the Navigators Ministry. Before lunch, I'd driven through the entire town, had coffee and written just a little. I was still eight hours away from the idea of sleep, so I grabbed a map of Texas and found Lake Tanglewood, a blue dot... Uh, a blue dot 20 miles north and nestled in a little township with a population of 825. If I was for forced to hide from the heat, I figured I'd do it in that water. With all day to kill and my air conditioning blowing on me, I wasn't in a particular hurry to reach the water. I weaved my way through the state routes, taking in the desperation of the empty, forgotten towns that peppered the landscape. Can I help you, the guard in the booth asked. I was looking for a lake where I could swim. Well, we have one. But only if you live here. Are you thinking about buying today, she asked. Are there any other lakes or bodies of water around here? I can't think of any offhand, she said. So the only water within spitting distance of the Palo Duro Canyon in all this hot weather is this place where nobody can get in. That's correct, she said nicely. By 6 p.m., the 30 mile an hour winds whipped across the Great Plains of the Texas Panhandle, spreading the oppressive waves of heat far and wide. I had two good hours of, uh, before the sun went down and the wind meant I couldn't reasonably set up my camping chair anywhere. I thought about knocking on one of the doors on the RV campers that were scattered about the lot, but the sounds of the mobile air conditioners dissuaded me. I hadn't come to the desert so that I could sit inside, although truthfully mine was the only tent set up in the entire park. It's possible that nobody would have opened the door to me because of that. Who tent camps in the Texas desert in the summertime? And more to the point, who lets that person into their home? The only other park option was drinking tea in the general store, a little structure with a partially working air conditioner, but that had closed 15 minutes prior. That left me with two choices, sit in my car running the air conditioning, or fill up my water bottle and hit the trail. And as I walked along the road that book ended, by, uh, that book ended the green landscape set against the burnt brown soil, I stopped for a moment. I was on an incline that disappeared around the curve to the left. I turned and looked down the hill, which disappeared in the opposite direction. I was exactly halfway along the road, unable to see where I was going and unable to see where I'd just come. I could only see what was directly in front of me, and that would have to be enough. So that's the beginning of the summer of run, and again, like trying to call out um, 
these moments, and I actually, I took pictures along the way, um, and unfortunately didn't know my wife then, so I took shitty pictures along the way. Um, <laughs> like in them and even with digital cameras, like I'm a tech guy, I can make anything work except for apparently cameras. Um, I was very cognizant of what was happening. Like I have pictures of the guard who was telling me, like she was laughing at me as she told me, and I guess everybody in Texas knows you can't swim in the panhandle. I had no idea unless you like, and I lived there. Um, just trying to be purposeful about the moments. Um, I was writing this as I went, so I have about 60,000 words of this that I've now started to, to reconstruct. But again, writing to me is about those moments and sort of thinking about a very specific time frame, which we'll talk about, which brings us to our writing prompt tonight. Less of me, more of you. <laughs> 